This next video is on Chapter 1.2, Physical Properties. Have you ever played a game where you um, asked yes or no questions to figure out a word that was taped to your back? What you were really doing was finding out the properties of that object. Properties can help identify and classify substances. When you were asking, you know, is it large, is it small, uh, what color is it, stuff like that, those are physical properties. And a physical property is going to be a characteristic that can be observed, and you're not changing it into a new substance. So if you're identifying a tree, you'll say, you know, it has green leaves, it has brown bark, you're talking about color. Um, you also can talk about texture. So let's get into... Um, some examples of physical properties right now. You're going to make a list in your notes. Magnetism is a physical property. We're going to be doing a lab where we take iron and sulfur and uh, alone iron has um, is, mag is magnetic, it has that property, and sulfur does not. So iron has magnetism as one of its properties and it identifies it as iron. Uh, conductivity is another physical property, whether or not it conducts electricity or even heat. Um, for instance, styrofoam or paper, it doesn't conduct heat, and that's why Starbucks gives you, you know, your coffee in a paper cup rather than a metal cup because metal conducts. So um, that's a physical property. Phase of matter, what that means is, um, is it a solid, liquid, or gas? Uh, what, what phase is it in? Let's see, solubility is a, another physical property. That just means the ability to dissolve. Color is a physical property um, because, you know, you can change the color. You can dye an Easter egg or something like that, but it's still that original egg. So color is a physical property, but it also kind of goes into the chemical properties category as well. So color goes back and forth, but color can help you identify a uh, an object. My son and I play I Spy all the time right now, so um, he's he's actually working with physical properties. He doesn't even know it. So color is um, a physical property. Helps you identify um, objects. Texture is also a physical property. Uh, going back to the tree, when you feel the bark, if if I had your eyes closed, it blindfolded you, and and gave you different objects. Um, you can use texture as one of the physical properties to help you identify um, the substance. Uh, freezing and melting boiling points or melting points, those are all physical properties um, because even if you have an object that boils, like if you have water in a pan and then it boils and it turns into a gas, it's still H2O, it's just in a different form, it's in a different state of matter, so that's a physical property. Density, density is um, kind of a keyword that we're going to be focusing on for a day or two, but it's a physical property, and density is going to be um, the amount of matter in a given amount of space, so you have this, you know, your body is a given amount of space and all the stuff that's packed into that space that um, you know defines your density. It's the amount of uh, matter in a given amount of space, and space is volume. So density is actually calculated mass over volume, mass over unit volume. So we're going to actually go into depth on density, but write down uh, density as mass per unit volume, or the amount of matter in a given space. Size is also physical property. Um, if we were you know closing our eyes and playing the game. If I said that this is a really large object, you know, that would cancel out all the little tiny things that might have been in your thoughts. So size is a physical property. Um, and you could blow things up, like if I had a balloon and I changed the size by blowing air into it, it's still a balloon, so it's a physical property. You're not changing the, what's called identity of the um, object. Ductility is a new word I want you to write down. Uh, ductility is the ability to draw into wires. So things that are ductile would be some of the metals, like copper is very ductile. Copper, you can draw it into thin, thin wires, and that's why we like to use it for our electrical appliances. Or if you look at the cord for your computer, um, it's got this, you know, coating on it, this rubber coating, it's an insulator, because underneath that, if you were to cut it open, you'd see copper wires, and copper conducts electricity, and you can also pull it into, draw it into wires, um, so it's very ductile. So uh, a lot of metals are like that. Nonmetals are not ductile, because most nonmetals are going to be gases at room temp, so. Um, malleability is the last word. 
Um, this is the ability to pound into sheets. So what things would be malleable? Aluminum is very malleable. You can pound that into sheets. A lot of metals are malleable. Gold's malleable. We can make it into jewelry. Silver's malleable. Platinum's malleable. Um, all a lot of metals are malleable. Iron's malleable if you get it hot enough. So physical properties are going to help you identify matter. Uh, each of these properties are going to be unique for that object. Physical changes do not form new substances. Um, we're not going to create a new substance. They do not change the identity of the substance either. So here I have a couple of examples. When you're burning a candle, okay, your candle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller as it burns, but you're not creating a new substance as far as the wax goes. Uh, the wax is just melting, it's just changing shape. Shape is another physical property, you should add that to your list as well. Um, changing shape is just a physical change, it doesn't change the identity of the object, it's still wax as far as this candle goes. Uh, same with the aluminum can, if I were to smash it with my foot or crush it, it's just a physical change. I'm just changing the shape, um, but I'm not changing what it is, it's still an aluminum can. Far, as far as the bread goes, um, it's just a physical change when I cut it. It's still bread. Um, I'm changing the size of it, but um, just by cutting it, it's not changing it into a new substance. It's still bread. And with the butter, if I take butter and I put it in the microwave and I melt it, um, it's going from more of a solid form to a liquid form, and it's still butter. I didn't change the identity of it. Um, I just changed the shape, and I changed the the state of it because it went from solid to liquid. So write all these examples down. Uh, so a cup, you know, freezing is a physical change, cutting, bending, dying, dying like Easter eggs or something like that, dissolving things. If I take like, um, you know, jello, jello powder, and I heat the water up, you have to have hot water because hot water helps th dissolve things faster. So I take the jello powder, I put it into the hot water and I stir it and it dissolves. Um, same thing if you put sugar in water it dissolves. Um, the last one's melting. So all these things are going to be physical changes and um, just remember that they don't change the identity. So you're, we're going to be talking about physical changes a lot more as the year progresses. Thanks for watching.